Okay, so good morning everyone. My name is Ajay Shah. I'm the Director of Research Informatics and Systems at City of Hope, uh, which is just uh, 100 miles from here, 150 miles from here in Los Angeles, uh, in the city of Duarte. My presentation. Anything but. Just a second. I mean, the full screen didn't seem to work here, but. Yes. Um, so let's see. Uh, can oh, this is a Mac. Can you just go back to the screen there, the other screen? Yeah. You need to um, mirror it rather. Oh yeah, mirror it. Yeah. Well, I usually have it on mirror one, but so here. here. Okay. I'm gonna do it here in real time. Hopefully. Nope. So we are all software people. So. Uh, let's see. and it goes like that again. Yeah, for some reason. I mm. can't figure out why. Uh, so can we use the uh, little machine right? if you don't mind? Sorry about that. Even Bill Gates, when he rolled out Windows 97, got a blue screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, and unfortunately, the only place I run Windows is on parallels, and that always has a problem of some kind, interference of something or the other, right? So. Let me think you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's so, uh, we can close that. I see. Next time I won't have parallels on my machine running when I'm doing PowerPoint. So while this comes up, I'll just make a second. Do you remember when we were at Biosim and the Mac police came to call our Macintoshes away? Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Steve Miller? I remember that. I remember that. He came in, he took all of our computers. <laughs> Hopefully it goes to the right screen. We came a PC shop in an hour. <laughs> and we have a blast off. Yeah, okay. There you go. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Good old rusty PC. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you just can use that. Sure. Thank you. Okay. okay, so a little bit about uh, City of Hope, uh, as I said earlier. City of Hope is uh, started in 1913. We are uh, started as a tuberculosis sanatorium. Uh, it's in a very hot and dry place on the eastern part of LA, uh, where there's hardly any population at the time. And um, now, uh, 103 years later, um, it's a NCI designated comprehensive cancer center. Uh, only 45 in the entire nation. We are one of them. Um, and we, are, we were one of the first uh, six endowed Beckman Research Institutes in the country. Uh, uh, City of Hope um, is a leader in the bone marrow transplant. This number is a little outdated. I think our total number of transplants now exceeds over 12,000. We are also a leader in uh, robotics uh, prostectomies, uh, over 6,000. Um, significant advances uh, in science, the, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, synthesized, synthesized recombinant human uh, 
uh, insulin, somatoferrin uh, insulin was synthesized at City of Hope. A humanized monoclonal antibody platform was developed at City of Hope. Uh, ribozyme therapeutics, biological therapeutics, siRNA and cellular. These are in, and in 2000, several of the small molecule therapies, they're all developed and in, um, invented at City of Hope. So what I'm going to talk about today is our use of um, uh, how we have incorporated City of Hope clinical data into Transmart, uh, a small uh, curation utility that we have built to import the uh, gene expression omnibus data or go data, uh, geo data uh, for loading into Transmart uh, data warehouse, a Transmart connector plugin to facilitate the transfer of the data from um, from uh, from Transmart, so we have, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, City of Hope scientific analytics platform that we have built, and how seamlessly oh thank you, how seamlessly the data goes from Transmart to our own uh, analytics platform. And last uh, at, at, at the end, I will talk a little bit about our scientific analytics platform as well. Um, I am I, I'm giving a talk on behalf of my two colleagues who are here. One is Hai Chin Lee, and other is Sai Achyutan. So I. I get to talk, but all the real work has been actually done by them, um, and uh, you know, they they worked many many hours and many for many months doing this. So this is our general data integration paradigm. As you can see, because we are a comprehensive cancer center and we have we do have patient data. So uh, and we have um, all scripts as our EMR. We are going towards Epic, but we do have all scripts EMR. We have our lab data or biospecimen data all in limbs, labware limbs and copath, the two systems. And we also have cancer registry. So California Cancer Registry or CNEX, where we all report all the cancer cases in great detail to the state of California and then to NCI. But mostly the state of California has extensive reporting requirements. So all of this patient data from different, uh, go into different systems at a point of care or for research systems, whether it is our homegrown clinical trials management system or some of the other systems. So we gather all this data and all this data goes into our City of Hope data warehouse. And from City of Data Warehouse, we have uh, I2B2, uh, I2B2 Data Mart in C2, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in our data warehouse. As, uh, uh, so all that ETL, all the data gets ETL into I2B2 Data Mart, uh, I, our City of Hope data warehouse to I2B2 Data Mart and I2B2 Data Mart to I2B2. And so we already had I2B2 about five years ago, four and a half years ago. So when we started to work on a Transmart, we leveraged the I2B2 data mart that was already there. So what we do is we take the data in I2B2 data mart, replicate it into Transmart data mart, but we also add uh, the omics data, which is not in I2B2. Of that now we push it to the our data warehouse and from data warehouse to Transmart data mart. So the, we haven't done imaging data yet, uh, we plan to do it in the future. Uh, so we'll have imaging metadata at least going into the data mart and then to Transmart data mart. But right now we have the omics data, some of it going there. Um, at the same time, we also take the uh, geo and GDC data. Uh, currently we have done only geo, GDC is work in progress. We push it through the curator utility that we have built uh, to Transmart data loader and then to Transmart. So you can see the Transmart is getting data from our I2B2 via Transmart Data Mart and, uh, and also from our curator tool. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, flavor of the data that we have in our uh, Transmart. We have 115,000 de-identified City of Hope uh, patient data uh, with rich demographic information. We also have detailed clinical diagnostics such as the ICD-9 code, the ICD-O code, um, and the biospecimen status, whether the tissue is available, not available, uh, the staging information, uh, along with the disease information. A uh, couple of things that we don't have right now and we are actively working, we're hoping that in next month we'll have is medications as well as the lab data. So those are the two missing pieces right now in our Transmart. Um, we are also part of, I think in the previous session somebody asked about tra uh, Shrine Network. We are also part of a Shrine Network called Ladder, Los Angeles Data Repository about UCLA and USA, uh, Children's Hospital in LA, and uh, about eight or nine other organizations, uh, Drew Medical, and several. So uh, one of the reasons why we decided to standardize on, I, standardize on I2D, uh, getting data from I2B2 as replication is because the same data uh, that is in I2B2, or a subset of it, uh, is fed into Ladder, 
We are also part of Orion Consortium that you might have heard about, which is a big cancer uh, initiative uh, nation nationwide. The same data marts in some form will feed eventually into Orion when it's up and running, and the same one feeds into a, another partnership we have called Trinetex. So we use uh, I2B2 data in multiple places, and Transmart happens to be one of them. So this is just a little bit of uh, the workflow in our um, curation tool. So we upload the geo file, uh, review, the, review and select the scientific data, define the category data label, set study ID, set subject ID, uh, see if there are more files that need to be added and review them. So this is just kind of a little screenshot, uh, set a series of screenshots which say how the clinical data file is selected, uh, how, the, uh, how the category and the category CD and the data labels are set, and how they uh, eventually how they review uh, the there's a facility to review the data and then once the data is reviewed then you create a file for loading into Transmart. It's just a real utility. In fact, it was developed by a high school student who is currently a freshman at UCSD. So he has been interning with us since his tenth grade. Uh, and then this summary came to us and we have we had him work on this as one of his projects. So it's. That plays a lot. <laughs> As we've been saying, that's not a rocket science. It, it should not be a barrier to, we, to using the platform. So right? we, we called him this morning. At, uh, we, we, we should have called him earlier, but we called him this morning. It is like 8.30 and he was barely awake. And we said, well, we're going to present some of your work if you want to stop by. And he was, let's just wait to sleepy freshman. So it's <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit about the uh, analytics because analytics now in precision medicine and analytics and personalized medicine is a big thing. So I figured, uh, what better way to start talking about analytics than starting out with the Dilbert cartoon and how precision medicine is going to work, right? So I'll leave, uh, just a quick look at this and I'll go on to the <laughs> I'll go on to the rest of the analytics part of the presentation. So we started looking at the analytics uh, in various contexts because we are a cancer center and we have a lot of, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have about 300 researchers doing various, uh, either in the basic research or clinical research combined. And uh, we realized that there's a common need and uh, whether it is for the analysis of tumor data, whether it's a benign or malignant tumor, or whether it is um, dissemination of, um, you know, about, uh, understanding uh, what kind of uh, what kind of sites are you know uh, me uh, methylated sites versus non-methylated sites? Our hospital wanted to look at the quality data. When we looked at all of these six, seven different project requests that came to us, we said, okay, well, let's just take a step back and see if we can come up with a unified way of doing machine learning or scientific analytics. So we started building a platform a few years ago, and I'll show you a few slides on the platform, but. Basically, what we wanted to do was there, there are dozens of algorithms, right? And there are dozens of uh, ways of doing uh, visualization and the ways of doing um, uh, cleaning up the data and uh, presenting the results and all of that. And when we did the analysis, we found that most of the time that people spend is just formatting the data and cleaning up the data. And then they run the algorithms, they look at the results, then they go back, Run, the, uh, run another algorithm, look at the results. So the data preparation and rerunning and running the algorithm took, um, according to our estimates, and then we have found it in literature, the same thing, it takes about 60 or 70% of your time. So we said, okay, well, let's, there are already really good algorithms out there. So let's not spend time in developing algorithms. Let's spend time in developing a platform which will take away the 60, 70% of the time and make it, uh, you know, uh, make it like 5% or 10%. And then let uh, people give people an ability to compare the results from all these different algorithms uh, as apple to apple comparison rather than apples and oranges comparison. So this is our guiding philosophy that we wanted to have. Uh, we wanted to have a tool that would uh, do the missing data analysis, provide multiple algorithms, um, uh, do various validation methods, uh, and really present all the results simultaneously. Oops. So this is the component view of how we build this platform. So our platform is built on Pipeline Pilot, just because it's, it was something that we were familiar with and it is uh, easily available commercial tool. Uh, someday when we you know, 
we hope to open source this and we may replace it with NIME or something like that. But right now, it is pipeline pilot. Uh, we have integrated our LDAP and uh, Active Directory uh, with, uh, with, bio, uh, with pipeline pilot. Uh, we integrated two tools for so preliminary data analysis and data cleanup. One of them is Orange for data visualization, and the other one is Open Refine for looking at the missing data or cleaning up the data in general. Uh, once that data is cleaned up and you've visualized it, then we use several computational algorithms, uh, several algorithms. All of them are either available in Pipeline Pilot or R or MATLAB or Huggin or H2O. So we have these couple of dozen algorithms now for clustering and classification. All of them are available, or decision trees. All of them are available in one of these platforms. So we did not write any of the algorithms. We, if anyone, we can use any of the algorithms available in any of these platforms. And we now saw uh, Smart R, and we may put Smart R as one of the other um, computation platforms along along with the five that we already have. And then we integrated with multiple. Uh, reporting and visualization methods. So Pipeline Pilot is this uh, tool which really where the data is going through um, and as the data passes through the pipeline, various components uh, based on any of the computation tools or data input output tools or visualization tool act on that data. So the results and visualization, we do it with D3, Tableau, R, um, or we can just print out a PDF. So. Uh, we, and of course, Pipeline Pilot has its own visualization tools that we can leverage as well. So it's really bringing all of these tools together in a unified platform so that with a single click, so it's really uh, the way it is set up, let me go to this next slide, it's really simple. What we do is we, in the Pipeline Pilot, there's a web interface which comes kind of free. So you bring up a web interface, it'll just ask you where do you want the data from? And you can pick a database, you can pick input file. Once you pick the data, uh, once you pick the data source, you can visualize the data just to kind of get a feel for the data. And then you can do a data cleanup uh, using Open Refine. Uh, you can do missing data analysis, you can do, uh, you can select the attribute. Uh, so you, and we have written the code which will let you, uh, which will let you normalize the data if it's continuous variable, you could bin the data. So we have, that is the part, those are the kind of codes that we have written. And you can also do a preliminary principal component analysis to just look at, again, to just get a basic uh, understanding of your data. Once you do that, then it presents you with a list of, there's a, depending on whether you're doing classification, which is labeled, or clustering, which is unlabeled, you can get, you get a list of all these algorithms that are listed in the third row here, and you, you select the algorithms you want. So you can select as many algorithms as you want. And depending on which algorithm selects, it figures out, okay, well, this is coming from R, this is coming from MATLAB, this is coming from Huggin. So you select all these dozen methods that you want. All of these methods will then run simultaneously. Okay, all the dozen methods that you have picked or two dozen you have picked, all run simultaneously. And then all of them, we apply the same common uh, uh, model evaluation methods or validation methods, whether they are five-fold cross-validation, ten-fold cross-validation, leave out, leave one out analysis, and once you have that, we can do consensus scoring as well on the features. So all of that work happens simultaneously, and I'll show you at the end, I'll show you a table. So you get the results as a table with all the results from each method listed. And when you look at all the results listed simultaneously, you can decide which uh, you know which methods work better for your data set and you're taking away all the time in running each method individually you're running everything simultaneously okay so you get structured output you get graphs and plots you get process data you get report pdfs all of that so we said okay well now that we have the spirit scientific analytics platform and we have transmart how can we bring both of them together so next series of slides we'll show you that so this is our integrated analysis workflow with Transmart, uh, I2B2, and Spirit. Well, we used to call this application Spirit Machine Learning, but we had a lot of problems with our scientists because our biggest barrier was, well, when we named the, we, we would go to our scientists and say, we're talking about uh, machine learning, and they would say, well, what is machine learning? So we just changed the name, and this is a more older slide. We changed the name to Scientific Analytics, and now we are past that barrier. We don't have to explain what is machine learning. We just say, well, this is analytics, and we are just kind of doing analysis of your data. So, you know, whatever makes it easy for adoption, right? So, uh, so we did. Uh, so our, our uh, 
methodology is really simple. We take the I2B2 data, and I already showed you how the I2B2 data is kind of you know makes its way makes its way into Transmart. Once that is done um, in the, within Transmart, so you can just follow this arrows with one, two, three, and four and five. But basically, we look at the you look at the data um, in uh, in Transmart, and I'll show you uh, some specific screenshots. Uh, once you select the data, the and retrieve the data set, we we have integrated, and I'll. I think the following slides will show you easier, uh, much more easily what we are trying to do. But we really don't push all the data from Transmart to our machine learning platform. We only push the IDs and some data. And then the data, because we create temporary tables in the database, and our machine learning platform, just based on I, uh, IDs, can pick up all the data from the temporary tables in the database. The reason for doing that is performance, of course, because you don't want to really push all the data back and forth. It's just waste of computational time. So we, we really uh, create a subset. You do the analysis, initial analysis, uh, in Transmart. We have, built a we have built a plugin within Transmart that will let you uh, not just invoke the data analysis method in our scientific analytics platform, but it would also push the data to our scientific analytics platform in the form of uh, ID subject uh, in the form of IDs and other associated data, and then you do the data analysis in our scientific analytics platform. Our next series of slides will show you how this connector works. Okay, so so the first step, of course, is to build a query within Transmart. Simple, just select your search criteria, drag drop. Uh, uh, and you save a subset. The next set is you get the results of the query that you just ran. Uh, and this is, uh, we, are, we are going with this breast cancer uh, patient cohort um, within, uh, within uh, GEO. Uh, so you get this uh, query results in Transmart. You look at the data and you say, yeah, this data looks good. Or you refine your query, whatever you need to do within Transmart. Once you have the data, once you have the query, uh, results to your satisfaction. Then you go to the next step. And now, as you can see, that I don't know if you can see this, but the spirit uh, classification methods and spirit clustering methods. So these are the plugins using the APIs that we have built uh, within Transmart. So you can just say push the data to Transmart using these plugins. And then um, you can select all the variables that you want uh, to go with the clustering or classification algorithm. And once you do that, <coughs> you preview the data. So you can see here that you're looking at uh, the patient identifier along with uh, you know, all the other attributes, whether it is uh, vital status, uh, number of years of survival uh, without a disease, um, or if it's a re uh, relapse, tumor grade class, a whole bunch of, uh, as many variables as you want. You push this data to our Spirit SA platform, and they, uh, it basically goes in as this huge URL, which is a RESTful API call from Transmart, to send the features and the class labels required to build the classification model in Spirit Analytics. So you're now sending all the data, all the information to our analytics platform using this kind of URL or RESTful API call. And once you run everything in our, so this this is the data set that I was talking about. It's the GSE 1456. Uh, it's uh, expression of breast cancer tissues in a large population-based cohort of Swedish patients, 159 uh, total patients, 103 with breast cancer, 50, uh, 56 who are healthy, and you can see that um, you know the kind of results. And I, uh, this is still kind of work in progress. I don't want to go into the detailed analysis, but you can see that uh, prediction accuracy with the training set. You can see this, uh, the methods selected are all listed simultaneously. The decision trees, C5 trees, support vector machine, artificial neural network, random forest, log linear model, and naive base. And you can see the, I can't read, but. Uh, 
So how, what is the, uh, how many of these got classified? What is the accuracy of classification? And then performance of comparison with the training data. So you can see that all the methods are simultaneously listed along with uh, the performance, uh, uh, what is the accuracy. And then when you comparison with the uh, training data, you can see the precision, recall, the F measure, and specificity for each of the methods. Now, when applied to a larger set, this is just the training data. When applied to a larger set, you can see that some of the numbers change. Uh, but the more important part, other than, of course, which method is better or not, uh, which you can see in precision accuracy with data as uh, this is for the entire data set. You have the uh, precision and accuracy with the test data compared uh, and comparison with the test data. But the more important part is all the feature, all the methods listed their top five features that lead to a classification. Okay, so from the decision tree, uh, from the decision. Uh, the tree perspective, the top five features that lead to classification of, uh, of the tumor types were tumor grade, relapse, death by any reason, or classification of patients, I should say, were tumor grade, relapse, death by any reason, relapse free survivor, and uh, death, uh, death, uh, death by cancer. Whereas in case of random forest, you can see it's only the last two features are different. Whereas in the artificial neural networks, it's tumor grade and then it's death by any reason, TM1, TM4, and TM2, which is the grade of the tumor, right? So, the, so you can see that how different methods compare with one another. And you can actually do consensus scoring. And we have a built-in feature that allows you to do consensus scoring, saying that how many methods vote for the same features to be at the top. And so you can take a look at that. But the reason for doing that is because we don't want the method bias to be dictating as to what, um, uh, you know, what classification is better versus the other. So we, we present all of that. And there are quite a few graphics and all that built into it, but I won't go into that today. Um, but it, this gives you a flavor of why we do the scientific and why we do the machine learning and how we present the results and what is our philosophy behind uh, combining these dozen, a uh, couple of dozen methods in one shot. Okay, so finally, in conclusion, uh, what I presented today uh, is that we have implemented a curation tool to prepare the data. Uh, in this case, it's a uh, geo data for loading into Transmart uh, data warehouse. Then I presented to you how we are using um, the integration uh, of the uh, City of Hope clinical data with the public data sets in Transmart and how our data warehouse, what kind of role our data warehouse plays into that. And the last thing I presented was how the uh, scientific analytics platform developed at City of Hope is integrated with Transmart both ways. One, how it shows up in the user interface using the plugin. And two, how is the RESTful API used to push the URL with all the relevant data sets uh, back to uh, our Spirit SA platform for further analysis. Okay, so that's, our, uh, that's the summary of the talk. And as I said earlier, all this work um, is really done by Hai Chin, who's our main lead on Transmart project, Sai, who's our lead on the scientific analytics platform, and Eric Jiang, who is the summer intern, who's probably still asleep in his dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, two people, two key people in our group, uh, Milad, who did the ba database backend work, and Sri, who is the director in my group, uh, responsible for all our software development. So uh, with that, I thank you very much for your time. <laughs>